the most expensive studio and equipment in the world going into this. This episode is being supported by Aux, the desktop app that helps you collaborate on music projects with anyone anywhere in the world, now available on Mac and PC. Click on the link in the description to get 50 gigs of storage for $1. This is well, this is a song that um, it kind of came about very spontaneously and right at the end, this is the last song to be written. And we had, we'd been at the church, like we were talking about earlier, recording the drums and bass and guitars for most of the record. And... We had a day off for some reason. We wanted a day off. We we had, you know, two or three three weeks in there and everyone was tired, so we took a day off. But we'd still got the studio. We were still paying for it. So I didn't take a day off. <laughs> <laughs> so I came into the studio and just kind of started mucking around by myself. And, um, yeah, it's a good example. I mean, because either side of that day off would have been so much sitting down and analyzing and thinking about stuff. And this is just a good example of being like, oh, well, I've got nothing to lose today. No one's here. Mm-hmm. It's a day off. I think that's quite a good mindset to be in sometimes, like forgetting what you're doing and just clearing your mind. And yeah, if there was a way to fake that, it would be incredible. Like, you know, I guess you can call your own day off, but it doesn't work. It has to be someone else saying, yeah, you don't have to yeah. do anything today. <laughs> and then you think, okay, I'm, I'm going to do that. And then <laughs> something amazing happens. Yeah. Um, creatively, I've got a studio in my garden which is where I work. And I always found it very unproductive kind of going between there and the house. You know, there was no separation. So now when I wake up, I leave the house through the front door, go for a walk, do something else. And then I come through the back door, even though it's all connected and go to the studio as if they're two different places. And I find if I do that, I can kind of compartmentalize the two things and have a creative space and a home space. Whereas before, if I got stuck or bored, I'd just go inside and watch TV or like make something to eat. And it was always really unproductive until I started doing that. So whatever um, I do, I just leave the front door and go away. I love it's that. A different space. I think that's fantastic. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, Jack, you got any routines at the moment? Habits? I wouldn't say like a daily routine, but I always, if I'm like reviewing something I've done, I like to be uh, in a, mu- a moving vehicle, but not driving. So maybe it's a bus or maybe it's a train or it could even be an airplane, but I need to be sitting by the window and like just looking out and listening to it like that. It's my favorite place to listen to music or and even to write music. Sometimes I'll like book a ticket on a sleeper train and get a cabin and just like have my laptop and just like be, have the window there with stuff. I like things uh, moving out the window, basically. Uh, most of the demos, well, less so now, but definitely in the past, most of the demos I would send would have mumble lyrics and mm. you do, you do funnily like get attached to, to mumbling. Yeah. Yeah, well, um, there's a there's a lot of mileage in mumbling. I think yeah. no. it's a good way to write the lyrics. I find I think you can kind of tell that Damon does it works the same way because the mumbles they kind of lead you the way to the to to a to a word that's going to phonetically sound right, and mm. that's halfway to writing a good lyric. It has to. I don't think I don't like just writing like you're not going to write a poem and then try and smash it into place into the song like really brutally it needs to it needs to um the syllables and stuff need to rhythmically work and sound good with the music you're putting the emphasis on the melody and then yeah. kind of moving around that I think. exactly i think you can tell when people have written words without music and then tried to place them in and sometimes to me sounds a bit off kilter mm. yeah very interesting I'm going to have to give a shout out to the software that I use, which doesn't get enough <laughs> praise, I don't think. It does. It has had a huge effect on how I make music because it, it's so good for sampling stuff. You can you press a button and it will record um, like what I'm listening to on the computer. So I'm on YouTube and I just quickly like record it. And then immediately, like if you see on the screen there, you cut it up into loads of different tiny, tiny sections. And each one, you can apply its own effect. You can pitch shift it. You can do whatever you want. It's just in terms of like manipulating sound i'm sure everyone's as quick as as this on their own stuff but i just i think this is the perfect program for for sampling other music and and twisting it and turning it samplitude and it's called samplitude yes. I, it's yeah. in the name it's funny that no one uses this program if you go on their website it's actually got a picture of me but I'm like, <laughs> i love samplitude it's me and like loads of german techno producers and stuff it's yeah it's amazing today's show is brought to you by our friends at orcs Our podcast looks in depth at the creative process, but one part of the process that we don't talk about is how painful it can be to manage these creative projects, especially when collaborating with other producers, musicians or vocalists remotely online. 
Currently, it involves numerous apps, websites and tools for file storage, sending large projects or providing detailed feedback. The team at Orcs are here to change that. The Orcs app keeps your door projects synced up in the background, so you don't have to wait for your collaborators to upload their latest version. And what's unique is that you can leave detailed, timestamped comments on the track and project stems, making feedback so much more precise and easy to manage. You can also relax knowing your projects are backed up too. The app is free for up to 10 gigs of project files, but there's a special offer for Take Notes listeners. 50 gigs of file storage for just $1 per month by using the code Take Notes, all one word, when you subscribe to the starter plan. Visit orcs.app forward slash take notes to get the full details. And now, on with the show. Uh, the guy that taught me to record music said, you can't polish a turd, and it's always turned out to be true. Like, make time, you know, tuning stuff, make sure it sounds good in the room, and it will sound good afterwards. Yeah, it's pretty simple stuff, but yeah. it always works. Um, I would say um, you don't need to go across the room and actually pick up the drumsticks, you can just go and find a sample pack and it's going to sound incredible. <laughs> like, save save the energy. They have this wonderful Mellotron, which is a very early kind of sampler, I guess, um, which the Beatles would use a lot, and found this setting called, I think it's trying to be a guitar, but I'm playing it like a keyboard. So it sounds quite unusual, but very percussive. But yeah, that's meant to be like this the steel strings of a guitar like when something's so bad that it's good like that, yeah that's clearly a terrible guitar sound but it creates something else and, that you've um, never heard before and seren's drum kit was like all set up so i just walked around and thought oh let's like make this into a beat this sounds fun yeah and this is all the same session and same recording from that day just me with my laptop on uh on the desk and that's why we took it to the mixing engineer. I said, sorry, the drums are just one sound. You can't mix this. And that's just the way it's going to be because it's just the most expensive studio and equipment in the world going into this very, very <laughs> cheap interface into my very, very right. crappy laptop. And Did you have you know, that plopped on like the, yeah, the 50 like channel Yeah, the rarest Neve channel in the world. <laughs> the stuff all this together wonderful stuff. And I'm kind of like just finding a place to put this down without breaking anything and. That's brilliant. Um, so, and when you were just recording the different sounds you were making on the different instruments, in effect, I'm like um, hitting record and then running quickly to like right. find that you know it's, it's a quite church. a big studio. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then kind of channeling your version of your bandmates exactly playing, in a yeah, way. Yeah, I love exactly. that. No, you were being Seren for a little bit. Exactly. Yeah. This is just loads of different virtual instruments on contact, but we've got a Shanai. Let me play this. <laughs> That's <laughs> very Frank, sir. When you isolate them. You're saying that's a shenai. hilarious. That is, can you not tell? <laughs> <laughs> it's a shenai. We have a, a shaka, a shaku hachi. We have an oud. We have a zerna. That's the key sound, That's I think. the best one, yeah. yeah. I was thinking about learning that for our next tour, but... They're quite hard to locate. <laughs> I couldn't find one. A fiddle. A naya titi. A duduk. A tulum. So what did you do here? You, this you... is just playing one melody, and then you just get to add as many sounds to it as you right. want. So all of them together. Yeah. It's this crazy orchestra. And then... Um, to try and sort of bring it back to earth, I am playing the guitar as well. That is a brilliant effect though, isn't it? Uh, together it sounds... Together it sounds amazing. Quite cool, I think. Because it's your tune, but yeah. as if you had taught it to a whole gang of people yeah, from around yeah. the world, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 